So I will say that we share several la layers of uh, artist experience with Claire. We also are a from the machine shop residency lineage. Um, and uh, I have a long history of uh, having the privilege of working with Abby and, and you are right, it is such a privilege and we all feel it very much. Um, Rough Rubies it, Artist Collective is an interesting sort of phenomenon. I don't know that I started, I, I think that I was like getting exhausted and so I was like, oh, there should be a group of us doing all this work. But it quickly became something very powerful for all of us, which was to be a group of women artists committed to inspiring dialogue about social issues, about our world, about ourselves, um, through our work. So the a last big show we had was uh, quite significant exhibit. We have a book that was published about it called Exo Sanctuaries that was all installation art um, that was showing down at the museum in Pueblo. And then we put forth this proposal with Abby for a group show in here. And then they're kind of, I'm not sure of the lineage, but uh, COVID came along and impacted our individual journeys and um, we found we were working very independently and, and uh, that this idea of a, the isolation resulting from COVID was a informing the intimacy of our experience with the creative process as individual artists and uh, as well as with the world around us. And we were dealing with this idea of feeling exposed, vulnerable, uh, and then very isolated, but both in a strong way and in, in this kind of naked, way and so all of our works ended up about that and thus the show name and though our work is so different it really all stems from that same place would you agree uh -huh. okay well i almost grew up in colorado springs i moved here in 1956 um, the same year that roman villa opened <laughs> <laughs> wow way back and um, have four kids, and I always kind of think of myself as first a mom and then an artist. And um, so this idea of making dolls kind of fits into my domestic mindset that I love. You've probably seen the little worry dolls in a box where you tell a doll you're worry and then you put your worry away into the box. And during the pandemic, I was very worried. I was one of those people that I just stayed home, I wore a mask. I still put my mask on a lot. But um, I, so I started wrapping these rag dolls and um, it really became a kind of like knitting or any other craft pro uh, project that, you know, it was just soothing and I got lost in it. Time would uh, kind of go away. And if it's okay with Abby, I would just like to pass a few around sure. because they're, you know, um, you know, let's just let these go around because dolls are really made to be held. Um, I won't take them all down. And they all, they came from a lot of fabric from my clothes that I can't wear anymore that didn't fit and jewelry that I haven't worn for 25 years. Um, my mother's jewelry, my grandmother's jewelry. I asked my daughters if they wanted it before I started using it on dolls. And then this roving was from Angie Adams who knits and yeah, so it's just like, it was like a collaboration with friends that weren't even, I 
at home where I was making them, but my friends are woven into them and my family. So um, that's I think that's one of the things that I find personally so moving in your work is uh, that they they you were saying it was like doing any craft project at home. Not <laughs> no no. First of all, it, it's something you didn't mention about yourself is that you're an art therapist. Yeah. So uh, the process of engaging with the materials in the storytelling and in processing inherently goes way beyond the surface. Too emotional. It never feels like a craft project. It feels like you've just peeled the surface away and you're seeing the heart and the emotion that just comes from you. And it's really freeing and powerful. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you for, yeah, yeah, the other things that I have in the show are these felted masks. And um, I don't even know why. I guess because I had all of this wool at home and I wasn't getting out, so I just started, I was going to make mandalas. And, but when I felted the wool, these teeth, this was the first one, they just showed up. And I had some mouth. Let's take it from there. And then they all became more or less faces. Um, so, yes, and I love to hear Laura talk about my work much better. <laughs> 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 that introvert is, is truly. <laughs> I, I think we all discovered an introverted part of ourselves over the last couple of years, even those who others might define as extroverts. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think a lot of us feel that space yeah. very much. I love my uh, gentle world mask being next to your yeah, friend. I know. Um, it's so and nice. Yeah, it, it, talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, our work really does. And um, yeah, I, I should I? I'm going to mention a little bit about Helen's work that you see there, and then this. And Helen is just this wonderful, exuberant spirit whose creativity goes in so many different directions. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Fragments is the name of the work that she created for this show. And it's just stream of consciousness following a thread to create an image. Um, and for seal untangling. And we spent a lot of time talking as a group about how we're all trying to untangle what doesn't make sense to us about our world, our society, about the way things work, about the identity of our country. And, and sh this word just Stuck with seal and was very much what she wanted to uh, address in her oh in her in her work and she does and the work is very current and very raw um, and just from with her it's always from here there it is wonderful and raw and and. Uh, and then uh, my paintings and the drawings that are kind of uh, interfering with you being able to see and uh, my gentle world mask, uh, they all emerged from uh, my series called Touch. And, uh, and depending on what you're reading, sometimes I refer to it as whispering touch. Remembering Touch is the title of one of these. Um, the idea that um, when I close my eyes, I really, uh, well, I wrote it really well in my artist statement, which by the way is, uh, is my shortest artist statement ever. But I was like, that's it. That's what it is, and it's basically I, I close my eyes and I see these images and the spaces, and 
All of them are prayers for a gentle, kind world. And uh, that's what all of these are. They are all an exposure of vulnerability, of rawness, and then sometimes, and in many, an exuberant, sort of hopeful, Oh, yes. Can I have this? I want to bring this one. So this, this head is, uh, was a little beaded bag of my mother's. Um, it was just so fun to repurpose all the things in my drawers and closets. And wonderful. Yeah. I forgot what I was saying, but I'm, I'm glad to be cradling this one. <laughs> uh, but so... All of the work that I created is really about just putting an intention out, being uh, very vulnerable in a way, and, uh, and expressing a hopefulness and optimism for the future and the vulnerability of, of the current existence that so many of us are living. And, uh, so that's what the right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that, that, that's, that's kind of what, what I was thinking about as I was doing my words. And they all, uh, it was really a satisfying. I hadn't worked with gold leaf since uh, getting back from my residency in Italy, and it, where I did a series that was exhibited in a one-woman show with a Croisa gallery, the uh, other side, uh, <laughs> icons of the anonymous Madonna. And um, it, they, uh, um, so I hadn't worked with, with uh, gold leaf since then, but these have a white gold leaf on them. Uh, integrated, and I wanted to use it kind of raw as a, oh, that's the word I'm using too much of. I'm saying it too often. And the, just use it, gold leaf, as paint, as well as edging, um, so it's integrated in with the mixed media. Mm -hmm. I, I had a question about, we were just talking about the white gold. Yes, yes. So when you work with that, I see it along the edge, like the frame. I love the subtleness of that frame that you don't notice it until you like move a little bit to the side, it catches your attention from mm -hmm. reflection. But I'm curious like how you apply it along with paint, how you use gold leaf next to or within the paint. Well, first of all, I have to say, like I do, it, Many tutorials I had had training, and in the end, it's all out the window. There is gold leaf <laughs> everywhere in the space, on the floor, in the air. My cat thinks it's really funny. I mean, it's just, and and it, it's, uh, I am, uh, I decided early in the process that I would choose two that I would intentionally use the gold leaf very pristinely, just to show myself I could do it. <laughs> you know, that doesn't mean there wasn't the gold leaf any place else in the room. With the uh, oil paints, I work a little unconventionally in that I go back and forth between the gold leaf and the oil paints, and uh, I will use the medium rather than exclusively the gold leaf bonding agent as I layer the imagery and the materials. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So speaking earlier about your going in due to COVID, your fear about the world as it was during COVID, is there any renaissance projects on the way now that we're sort of getting out of that? I would say sort of because I don't want to hex anything. I know, I know. We should not jinx it. But, yeah, but is there anything in the new beginning stage now that we're going past that? We are actually in the middle of drafting some proposals for some future shows. I mean, we, we thank you. <laughs> well, we actually, I have to say, um, for me, uh, 
personally, I'm so proud of what we've done. A, we're for very different artists. There also is a poet in Scotland we work with. And uh, a, it's quite a process for us to come together to find these visions, to find language that we connect with. Uh, but there's such uh, authentic desire to connect with the personal and the societal in each of us that I, I feel that some of the shows we've done are some of the best shows I've done. And uh, I'm really proud of that. So. Uh, yes, there are things in the future, but we're not talking about them because we don't jinx anything and we're working on proposals I, right now. For my work, um, gosh, one of the last installations I did was um, a memorial to the Sandy Hook mm -hmm, massacre. Right. And I did this installation in my backyard because, um, you know, it wasn't really something galleries were probably going to want to show. Um, and then I hosted Moms Demand Action. We had a mm -hmm. fundraiser in my backyard. And then I have to say, it was so depressing to do that work. I had 22 child size mm -hmm. uh, body bags on frames standing up in my backyard with lights and water guns and just all sorts of media. Mm -hmm. And so when I started working on the dolls, it just felt so good to me just to be some, mm. something that was pretty mm. and it wasn't sad. Um, and so I don't see these as particularly related to what's going on in the world right now, other than we always need beauty no matter what's going on in the world or else it'll be extremely depressing. Mm. And um, I think I'm going to keep making dolls for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as I have. It's like Rapunzel. I have so much material <laughs> all throughout my house that I kind of want to spit it all until it's gone. We love it. I kind of uh, felt a parallel between your, both of your works. There's a lot of anxiety, yet you are really uh, projecting being content mm -hmm. about your anxieties. Can you go a little bit more, talk about it? Oh, okay. How do you find beauty in that? Uh, being content about so much drama. Right. Well, for me, making any kind of art, but it was especially true with these, with the materials that were so pretty and textural. You know, it was fun. But I think it's um, it's like a meditation. It takes me away from my anxiety and away from what's going on in the world for brief periods of, of time during the day. So it's kind of an escapist. Um, or distraction. Distraction. But, you know, um, as an art therapist, I, I know that we can often, making things, whether it's making moccasins or a painting, um, can be a very healing experience. Just, and it certainly is all from within. You know, it's funny, I almost, uh, I, I, I bought for somebody else for Panuka, but now I'm reading it as I see the world by Einstein. And I started to read it, and it was a wonderful, just very early paragraph where he talks about, you know, if you don't uh, interact, if you don't reflect upon where you are in the world and how you see it and how the other experiences of others are then oh my gosh you know i won't use what he says but he'll say i'll say he basically says how unfortunate for you so i think that you know there are the the journey for some of us is a complex and nuanced journey we feel a lot we see a lot it's not like anxiety and then me at peace. It's all woven together. And there is no me without that anxiety. Uh, and I do think it's funny, the major works that I did before I started working with the group was a, I, I had done an erotica series, which was very joyful. And then I, 
did the five-year project working with veterans, and that it was very sad. It was so sad by the time I was finished. And uh, the battle portraits. Thank you. Um, which was so intense. And even as we have been creating shows uh, that however we verbalize about them are about our experience winding through this world and hopefully creating dialogue and, and discussion among others. Um, and sometimes Exocentuaries was very much, it could have gone very dark. It could have been a very depressing show, but it wasn't. It felt luminous. It felt beautiful to create this work that kind of turned, for me, the work that I created turned uh, the experience of being human in the environment around. So instead of uh, looking at the environment or being outside, it was like being inside the environment and always with this feeling of light and blue being so prevalent in my newer work. And I felt this work too, although the idea of touch comes from a period when we could not touch. Um, it, it, it has optimism in it. For me, it's about a gentle world. So the anxiety is threaded through like a golden thread, not like something to reject more, but a part of the fabric. So that was my thinking. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the fencing mask. Uh, well, I found those at some antique store in Florence, Colorado, probably five years ago. And um, I've always saved bones. Thanksgiving means I get a lot of bones that I <laughs> clean. And, I never knew how beautiful turkey wishbones were until I started sharing them. Well, Adam's Mountain Cafe saved wishbones for their turkeys for a year, so I had a lot of wishbones that didn't come out of my oven. Um, let's see, I think when I was making the, um, the felted masks, I remember that I had the fencing masks and I just brought them in. and. Um, just started playing with the um, wool and bones and fiber and um, I think so many of my ideas really start from the materials and once I start playing with the materials something grows and it becomes something I'm never quite sure what it's going to be until I'm you know three-fourths of the way through the process and to me those were more these are soft um, fencing masks are more about protection, and so I think that's why I love seeing the way Abby combined them and the contrast between hard and soft. And, yeah. Thank you, ladies.